Today on Canyons News, we take you to a sacred Native American ceremony featuring dancing and singing held here on campus. Then we look at a returning Thanksgiving event where volunteers help feed the community. And finally, we show how the city lit up Main Street to kick off the start of the holiday season. Canyons News starts now. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Brandon Broyles and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. The shock of multiple LA County Sheriff deputy suicides in a 24 hour time period is still being felt by the law enforcement community nearly a month later. And while these tragedies have taken a toll on the department, Family members are also feeling the pressure. Canyons News reporter Micaiah Asher brings us their story. A lot of what he deals with is very traumatic and um, very stressful. Um, any call on any day, like it could be a random Monday and it could be, you know, a murder that he walks into and something that he sees that is, that most people will go their entire lives without seeing. The mental health epidemic is at an all-time high, and events like this should be eye-opening for everyone in law enforcement. But even people directly related to tragedy struggle too. Grief can take a huge toll on loved ones, and it's a very serious matter. Suicide is a really heavy thing, and we as a community must help one another through the storms that we all experience. Mental health has, um, still does, has a, a really big stigma on it. People that have never struggled with it do not understand it. Anything from... Um, just cheer up, or um, think think positive, or um, exercise. Or um, one thing I will say is, don't ever think that you know what a person goes through just because of how they may act or look on the outside. Very very real thing that is not just all in your mind or all in your head. Means news. I'm Makai Asher. LASD said in a statement, it's providing support and resources to the families of the four, of the four victims. If you or anyone you know is struggling with mental health issues or having thoughts of suicide, please seek help by calling the National, health, National Mental Health Crisis Hotline by dialing 988 on your phone. The CDC says one of the best ways to deal with mental health issues is to get outside and exercise. Maybe take a walk in a park. The city of Santa Clarita provides dozens of well-maintained parks for residents to use, but some feel one park is in desperate need of an upgrade. Canyons News reporter Leah Pastorio brings us the story. Bouquet Canyon Park is known to families throughout Saugus in the Santa Clarita Valley. The park features tennis courts, a baseball field, and a playground for all to enjoy. The play structure, which was installed in 1996, features a swing set, a 2-5 to five year old area, and a 5-12 to 12 year old area. But as time goes on, the ability to maintain the playground becomes a challenge. Finding replacement parts when things are damaged has become rather difficult. With hopes of a new play structure for kids around the neighborhood, many parents are eager to see some much needed improvements. Seeing something new and shiny is always nice and then now we've been to some of the parks where they've done the recent renovations and they're more populated than this one for sure, but I love this park. I think it's kind of run down and not everyone's top choice to come here, so I think that would motivate people to come visit. Santa Clarita's services department looks to feature the new playground with inclusive elements throughout. Many parents hoping their children will be more inclined to enjoy the layout more than ever. My son is climbing right now, so anything, a lot of climbing stuff is a lot of fun. They have really neat, uh, like not rock climbing walls, but rock walls that, he can, that kids are scaling. Um, some inspiration, there's one by the Five Knolls off of Golden Valley or uh, the Richard Ryu Park has a really nice rock climbing section. That's been around for a long time and they can imitate and it's nice. Yeah. For Canyons News, I'm Leah Pastorio. And now turning to campus news. This Thanksgiving was more than eating turkey and stuffing for the Santa Clarita community. It also served as an opportunity for folks to get out and enjoy a unique and scenic COC tradition. The crack of a starting gun officially began the 15th annual turkey trot early Thanksgiving morning. Soon to be participants warmed up in the Cougar Stadium, eagerly awaiting for the beginning of the race. Proceeds of the 5K race went directly to COC cross country and track and field teams, many of whom participated in the race. 
While many focused on achieving the best time possible across the three mile circuit, others who didn't race showed up for their own reasons. Have fun, family time. My wife is a professional runner and my son is also following her track. So eventually we wanna, you know, support him to start getting into the right timing for his school. Runners like Pedro's son, Ethan, were subjected to long winding roads and uphill climbs along their quest to reach the finish line back in Cougar Stadium. After over three miles of running, the 15th annual Turkey Trot has been cemented in COC history. And while the race may be over, the feelings of exhilaration and smiles still remain. I had so much fun. The course was so fun. Yeah. It was great with my scenery too. Medals were given out to the first 300 participants to finish, but some didn't let the idea of competition control their experience. I, I'm just glad I did a pretty good on this. I didn't die. <laughs> For Canyons News, I'm Brandon Broyles. College of the Canyons has made a promise to first-time students that has been beneficial for many, especially those from underserved communities. Canyons News reporter Emily Diaz brings us the story. COC has been ranked 31st out of 100 in the Hispanic Outlook in Higher Education magazine for enrolling the largest number of Hispanic students and granting the most degrees. Programs such as Canyon's Promise provide first-time college students with the opportunity to attend COC with paid tuition for the first two years. We really recognize the fact that when you're a first-generation college student, meaning that you're the first in your family to attend college, which a lot of Latinx, Hispanic students fall under that category, they need extra help and support and resources more than our students that have parents that got their bachelor's or master's degree. It is very new to them navigating um, higher education, and it's confusing, you know, between the different departments and admissions and records and financial aid and promise and counseling and our basic needs center. There's almost like an overload of resources that are available to students, which is amazing. Professors at COC feel the same. So I teach women's history on campus, and I'm especially interested in a population of young women who are trying to achieve their educational goals. And so programs like Canyon's Promise and other student services programs that we have on campus can really help young women who may have family obligations, who may have other expectations that are sort of inhibiting their pursuit of their educational dreams. Jackie Moraga, a Hispanic former Canyon's Promise student, is now continuing at UC Davis. And being part of Canyon's Promise also got me introduced to Mesa where I got my job and it qualifies as work study and that was really helpful because at Davis, work study works a little different but it definitely prepared me to be able to apply for that and start working. Now that I'm at UC Davis, I'm able to pursue my bachelor's degree for environmental science. For Canyon's News, I'm Emily Diaz. COC students were treated to a special demonstration of honor and culture right here on campus. Canyons News reporter Ian Gutierrez has the story. The beating of a drum attracted a large crowd in front of COC's Intercultural Center. In honor of Native American History Month, the Native American Indigenous Alliance has prepared this event for staff and students here on campus. Today we're featuring um, the Wild Horse Native American Association, um, their Diné ancestry, Navajo, and they're going to be putting on um, traditional native dancing and giving away free fry bread. There's going to be honey, powdered sugar to make it like a combo, but if they want to just, you know, taste a normal fry bread, they'll be able to also. This event could not have been possible without one of the organizers' passion for promoting multiculturalism. Part of my role was to create a program and provide events that demonstrate the culture, celebrate the culture. And for those in attendance, they were able to witness many sacred dances, including the jingle dress dance, which brings healing to people, fancy shawl, a dance about transition and evolution, hoop dance, representing the circle of life, and fancy dance, a fast paced dance, representing the horse spirit. I, I just think it's incredible that these guys are committed, you know, so so intensely. And I think the dancing, the dancing is just amazing. I love seeing people of different cultures um, and getting the opportunity to share. And an experience like this, it's really valuable. It was really informative as well and just makes you more sympathetic to the plight of Native Americans in general. For Canyons News, I'm Ian Gutierrez. 
Next, we turn to Brianna Alvarado with an in-depth look at the important news happening around the globe and in the Santa Clarita Valley. So Brianna, tell us what's trending. Thank you, Brandon. Here's a look at the news you need to know. First, we turn to the Middle East, as military actions have resumed between Israel and Hamas as their week-long truce has come to an end. Israeli forces have resumed full combat operations in Gaza, stating on X, formerly known as Twitter, that Hamas violated the pause by attacking Israeli territories as they have resumed actions against the Hamas terrorist organization. According to officials, the ceasefire saw the release of 110 hostages taken during the October 7th attack and the release of 240 Palestinian women, mainly women and minors. Hope for a new ceasefire seems unlikely as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has ended negotiations saying they have hit a dead end. Nationally, a political debate between a pair of blue and red state governors captured the country's attention as Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis took on California's Democrat Governor Gavin Newsom live on Fox News. The debate focused on two competing visions for America and offered plenty of back and forth verbal fireworks. Who won is up in the air as responses online seem to be split right down party lines. And finally, local bus services are set to return to normal operations as the MV transportation bus stri driver strike has come to an end. The union representing transit workers voted in favor of a new four-year deal submitted by MV Transportation this past Sunday. All bus routes impacted by the strike are expected to be back to pre-strike operations immediately. And that's what's trending. I'm Brianna Alvarado for more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley. You can check us out at canyonsnews.com. Now back to Brandon at the Canyons News Desk. An annual city tradition that provides free holiday meals to residents in need has returned after being canceled due to the pandemic. Canyons News reporter Rose Navarro brings us the story. Every year, people of all ages gather at the Canyon Country Community Center and enjoy a free Thanksgiving meal. This is the first time since 2020 that this event is being held, so many families and staff are thankful to be back. As you can see, families are enjoying their favorite Thanksgiving meals while enjoying time with their family and loved ones. They even have a penguin. The penguin is Parkway Motors' mascot as they were the sponsor of this event. Managing partner and chief operating officer Stephen Keefe was also in attendance. It's a fantastic city. It's a fantastic place to live, but it's a great, great city. Too. People who work here, they put on all these events, they put an awful lot into it. Julie Calderon, the manager of the New Hall and Canyon Country Community Center, has helped organize this event for the past 15 years. We see everybody coming together under one roof during these events, and it's just a joyful, wonderful feeling to see everybody come and just enjoy a free meal. Many Santa Clarita residents have grown up attending this event and now volunteer and give back to the community. I kind of like just helping the community, and it just makes me feel nice to like give something, and then I get the sense of gratitude to know that there's so many good people like helping the community with me. It's really important to have people that are always willing to help out in the community because when we have people willing to volunteer and do stuff like this, it's what creates a more cohesive and inclusive community. For Canyons News, I'm Rose Navarro. The Santa Clarita Boys and Girls Club looked to raise the charitable Christmas spirit just a bit early this year. Canyons News reporter Enrique Caldera has more. The Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita hosted their 21st annual Festival of Trees auction, an event that gives Christmas season a spark and helps the community. So Festival of Trees is our annual fundraiser supporting the Boys and Girls Club of Santa Clarita Valley. It's our 21st year and what it is is we have a big gala which is happening right now. It's called the Magic of the Lights Gala. We have a live auction of big trees that are packaged with items and then we have a silent auction going on over the next few days. This is a look here at this year's Festival of the Trees where items like gingerbread houses and Christmas trees 
will be auctioned off. All proceeds will be donated to the Boys and Girls Club here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Guests will also have the opportunity to look at the items before bidding on them while sitting down and enjoying a meal. Guests who attended helped kick off the Christmas season spirit, but while doing so, they were also making a difference in the lives of the kids in the Boys and Girls Club. It's how we are able to fund our programs here, which provide local after-school programs to kids who need it the most. So we have snack, uh, arts, recreation, academic support, leadership, all kinds of stuff year-round. As for others, they were there to enjoy the festive event with family and friends. This is one of my favorite events of the year. I love the holidays, I love Christmas, I love all the trees and decorations, so getting to come out and see our beautiful uh, community center wrapped up in all of the red, green, and sparkling lights of the holiday seasons is amazing. For Canyons News, I'm Enrique Caldera. A day filled with holiday joy and shopping had community members decking the halls, all for a good cause. Here's Canyons News reporter Brianna Alvarado with more. May the cure be with you. <laughs> the Relay for Life's Holiday Boutique is back fundraising its ninth year in the Santa Clarita Valley. The organization helps with raising more money for research, transportation services for cancer patients, support groups, and many more, says cancer survivor Leslie Borgen. And what makes ours special is it is a fundraiser. And, and all the, the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. Vendors from all over Santa Clarita come together to help out and share their own personal stories. Specifically, the Santa Clarita Pink Sisters, who have been very vocal about the relay and helping women get diagnosed early from breast cancer. We meet once a month to discuss our breast cancer diagnosis and all our members are in different stages of breast cancer. Some are uh, clean and some still have cancer. As family and friends walk into the center behind me, browsing through the aisles and buying Christmas gifts, the Relay for Life's Holiday Boutique is a perfect way for Christmas shopping while also contributing to a good cause. From selling sweet treats to handmade goods, the Relay team makes sure everyone in the community is welcome in. Some members have lost someone to cancer or they themselves are cancer survivors. My sister passed away in 2014. Um, my nieces and I had seen a posting about Relay and they were going to be at Barnes & Noble teaching people how to sign up. We thought, we're going to do this and we've been doing it since 2014. If you want to join the team, please contact Relay for Life of the Santa Clarita Valley or come down to the next fundraiser on May 4th, 2024. For Canyons News, I'm Brianna Alvarado. Have you ever been to Disneyland and been blown away seeing all the lights illuminating the park? Well, we've got a bit of that right here in Santa Clarita. The Canyons News reporter Dakota Searcy brings us the story. Grab your hot cocoa, your friends, and family, and join us in Saugus for the annual Wakefield Winter Wonderland. This event is hosted by the residents of Wakefield Court every year from December 1st until the end of the month. The Wakefield Winter Wonderland tradition has been going on since 1994, in the wake of the tragic Northridge earthquake. Over 40 houses participate, and each household spends weeks coming up with their own themes and setting up their extravagant decorations. All of the neighbors work really hard to decorate not only their own homes, but the community and the neighborhood itself to kind of bring out the holiday spirit for everyone here in Santa Clarita. And um, we work really well together. We're actually friends outside of the Christmas season. It's a really wonderful environment. It's really great for like my children and all the other children on the street to be able to grow up here because we do stuff throughout the year. We actually have holiday parties that we get together um, for your birthdays, anniversaries, whatever. We just have a really fun time. We love bringing the festival holiday spirit to everyone that comes to visit us here in Santa Clarita. Visitors can view the lights by driving through the streets, but it's most best to walk along the sidewalk to see the displays up close and take pictures. Although construction is still underway, looking back at past years, we can see how spectacular the houses came to be, and this year will be no different. There's a story that goes along with all of the houses, so when you enter, we tell the night before Christmas story, so you're welcome to read all the storyboards. Um, every other house has a storyboard, and it kind of tells the story, so we see people reading that to their children. Be sure not to miss out on this limited time experience, as it won't be here too long. 
For Kenyans News, I'm Dakota Searcy. And as Christmas is right around the corner, the streets of historic downtown Newhall are lit up to celebrate the holiday season. Bringing us a look at all the festive spirit is Kenyans News reporter Roberto Alcala. And many will remember this special day of the year. The holiday season officially kicked off in Old Town New Hall on November 18. The annual Light Up Main Street welcomed families to local winter wonderland experience. I wanted to do something with my kids. Um, I'm a single mom. As you can see, it's just me and them. I haven't had it since I was a kid, and my kids have never really experienced. We normally have to drive far. This was only like 10 minutes away from our house. And having something like this is, means a lot. Folks gathered in front of the New Hall Library for the big countdown of the 23-foot Christmas tree lighting and to see Main Street charged to life in a festive atmosphere. Three, two, one. If you remember, this event started eight years ago outside of Henry Mayo Hospital, where only about 200 folks showed up. But as the event has grown, so has the need for more room. So now with 5,000 people enjoying the annual tradition, Main Street is a perfect fit. It was wonderful. It was amazing. There was snow. There was the light. There was thousands of people. There was a pop-up bar. There were retailers. It was so much fun. New Hall has held this tradition for more than a decade with sponsors, vendors, and performers coming together to make this yearly event possible. However, this isn't just a tree light up. It's about coming together as a community and getting ready for the holiday season. It literally is family. Just seeing everyone so happy. You know, we went through this pandemic where we were all separated and now just to see everyone so happy and I feel happy to be able to take my kids out. It's it means a lot. It's very inclusive and everybody gets to come out and hang out and feel safe and this is a wonderful time to do it. It's my favorite part of the community that we do a lot of things here. If you missed this year's event, come back next year as the celebration is held annually on Main Street. For Canyons News, I'm Roberto Alcala. That does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Brandon Broyles. Remember that you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle, canyonsnews_coc, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.